Let's now go to the final type of exponent, which uh, is a fractional exponent. What in the world would we do if we had a base and then we had a fraction as the exponent? Well, again, our simple definition is not going to apply. We're going to have to rely on the rules to help us out. Let's start with the situation where you have a base and what's called a unit fraction as the exponent, one over something, like one half or one third or one fourth. Well, over on the side, I made up the example of eight to the one third. Let's say we're trying to figure out what in the world that means. Well, I made up a little problem so that I could use the rules of exponents. Eight to the one third times eight to the one third times eight to the one third. This is a match of rule number one of exponents. That's the one about how do you multiply uh, items with the same base. And what rule one said was the base stays the same and the exponents simply get added. One third plus one third plus one third. Well, one third, one third, one third makes one, and eight to the one is just eight. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Whatever eight to the one third is, Apparently, it's the number that if I multiply three of them together, I get eight. Well, we have a name for that in math. It's called cube root. The cube root of eight is the number you have to multiply three of together to get eight. Therefore, eight to the one-third is simply just the cube root of eight, which, by the way, is equal to two. Two is the number you have to multiply three of in order to get eight. The point is, fractional exponents have to do with, of all things, radicals and roots. When you see a fractional exponent, you've got a radical involved. Going back up to my definition area then, what we're saying is, x to the 1 over n is the same thing as the nth root of x. In our example, it was cube root because the denominator was a 3. If the denominator had been a 4, it would be fourth root, five, fifth root, etc. Okay, that's nice, but what about any fraction? What if I had four sevenths or seven ninths or something like that? How do I deal with that? Well, that's not too difficult to figure out from this radical stuff. Uh, again, over here on the side, I made up a problem that we can work out in two different ways. I have eight to the one third squared. Well, this is an exact match of rule five of exponents, the one with one base and two powers. That's the rule that said keep the base the same and multiply the powers. One-third times two is two-thirds. So that's one answer. On the other hand, what I could do is I could just use this radical idea that we just came up with uh, earlier. Eight to the one-third is the same thing as cube root of eight. The point is simply this. These two items here obviously are equal to each other. And that really helps me to understand how to deal with fractional exponents. You can see that the bottom, the 3, became a cube root, just like before. And the top, the 2, turned into this power out here. That's how it works every time. When you have x to the m over n, the bottom turns into a root, the nth root of x, and the top turns into a power on the outside. That's what I always remember. The top is the power, the bottom is the root. Okay, let's take a look at some example problems where we deal with this. The first one says 25 to the 3 halves. Okay, we're supposed to figure out what that is by hand. Well, if you see a number being raised to a fractional exponent, the thing to do is to turn it into this radical form. Remember, the bottom is the root, the top is the power. So this simply means the square root of 25, remember for square roots you don't have to write the little 2 there, raised to the third power. The bottom told me square root, the top told me third power. Well this is pretty easy to figure out. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 to the third power means 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. Second example, 8 to the negative 2 thirds. Now this one has a couple of issues. It's got the fractional exponent. It's also got a negative exponent. Negatives tend to be the worst part, so I would suggest getting rid of that first. 
That's what we covered earlier. How do you get rid of negative exponents? You reciprocate the base. So instead of 8, I have 1 over 8. And that allows the sign of the exponent to change from negative to positive. Exponents do not get reciprocated. Okay, The base gets reciprocated. The exponent simply changes sign. Once I've done that, I can now take that denominator here, and I can switch to the radical format. So I have 1 on the top. Let's see, the 3 on the bottom tells me cube root. And then the 2 on the top tells me second power on the outside. This is now something I can work out step by step. The cube root of 8, we were talking about that earlier, that's just equal to 2. And if I raise 2 to the second power, I get a 4. The final answer to this problem is 1 over 4, 1 fourth. OK, let's take a look at the third one. Uh, this one definitely has a place where it's easy to go wrong. You might be looking at this going, OK, uh, let's see, 4 on the bottom. So that's fourth root. And I'll put my negative 16 in there. And if you do that, you've made a mistake. Because the base in this problem is not negative 16. How do I know that? Because there's no parentheses. It's that imaginary dividing line thing again. That negative has nothing to do with the rest of this problem. It's just hanging out there on the outside. So I need it. I mean, I'll keep it sitting there, but it's not connected to the rest of the problem. The base in this problem is just a 16. So that's what goes inside of the fourth root. The top is a 1, which means I have all of this raised to the 1 power. Well, the 1 power doesn't do anything, so there's no point in me writing that down. All I need to do is figure out the 4 through to 16, and I will be done. That just means what number could you multiply 4 of to get 16? And if you think for a minute, you should realize that's a 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. I have that negative that's been hanging out there from the beginning, and I'm done. Final example. This time, by the way, I can see I do have the parentheses. So I know that negative 49 is going to be uh, in the radical. It is my base. I don't have any negative exponent or anything, so I can go right to the radical notation. Negative 49 gets put inside what kind of root? A square root, because the bottom is a 2. And all of that is raised to the third power. Now, here's the thing. When you go to try to work this out, you should realize pretty quickly you've got a problem. The first thing you're supposed to do is take the square root of negative 49. That means find a number multiplied by itself that equals negative 49. I can't do that. 7 times 7 is positive 49. Even negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. I can't find a, a real number that I can multiply by itself to get negative 49. And so, this is a bad problem. I have to stop and just say, hey, you gave me something bad. This is undefined. It doesn't exist. And that would be the final answer. So you can be on the lookout for that. Be sure you are practicing all these kind of things by hand as you're going through the handout and the homework. The calculator can do some of these things, but if you use the calculator, you won't be learning the things that you need to learn in order to be successful in this unit.